we are going to talk about the alternating series test. And there's a lot we have to talk about in order to set up uh, the test before we start actually using it on some examples. An alternating series is a series whose terms are uh, alternately positive and negative. For example, we have a positive, negative, positive, negative terms, positive, dot, dot, dot. That means it keeps going in this pattern. Uh, and what makes it negative, as we know, is we have negative 1 to the n plus 1. This is what makes uh, not, not the value negative, but alternating, that is. Or it could start at negative and go positive, negative, positive, and keep on going in that pattern. This is also an alternating series. In general, just knowing that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals 0 tells us very little about the convergence of the series. So just because the limit goes to 0 of the sequence, uh, we don't necessarily know anything from that. Uh, the, the series, however, turns out that alternating series must converge if its terms consistently shrink in size and approach zero. So even though this, uh, as long as the, if the sequence is going to zero, or, yeah, then uh, the series must be uh, converging. The alternating series test. If a sub n is greater than zero, so in other words, if the terms are bigger than zero, then an alternating series, just this part is, must be bigger than zero. Uh, and you can either have an n here or an n plus one converges if both of the following conditions are satisfied. The first condition is the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence must be approaching zero. Number two, a sub n, or the uh, sequence here, is a decreasing sequence. That is, if the term after the term before, if the term after is less than the term before it for all n. In other words, if it's going one half, plus one-third, plus one-fourth, and so on, as long as the n plus one term is less than the nth term, then this is a decreasing sequence. Note, this does not say if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not equal zero, the series diverges by the alternating series test. The alternating series test can only be used to prove convergence, not divergence. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not equal zero, then the series diverges by the nth term test for divergence. And we've already talked about this test, not by the alternating series test. So in other words, if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of this uh, sequence and it does not equal zero, that's the test that the nth term test uses. So you just you can't say alternating series test because this happened. In our first example, we are uh, asked to determine whether the following series converges or diverges. This is an alternating series, so we're going to use the alternating series test. And we have to show two things. First of all, we have to show that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to 0. And we have to show that a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n. So let's... Uh, Try the first one here. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 2n minus 1. And that is equal to 1 half. And so we already know series diverges by the nth term test. In our second example, we have another alternating series, of course, and we have to show the same two things. So let's start out with the limit as n approaches infinity of n over the natural log of 2n, which is infinity over infinity. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 1 over 2n times 2 which is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n over 2. Uh, the 2's cancel out, and this is equal to infinity. So it does not equal 0, so series diverges by the nth term test. 
In letter C, we are asked to find, uh, see if this, can, this uh, series converges. If we plug 1 in, we have cosine of pi, and cosine of pi is negative 1, and that'll be over 1 because we have an n down here. Then if you plug 2 in, cosine of 2 pi is 1, so we have plus 1 over 2, and then minus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 5, and so on. So what this really is, is sigma n equals 1 to infinity. Rather than writing cosine of n pi, we can write negative 1 over n. And we need the first one to be negative 1. Well, if I make this n, uh, that's going to fit perfectly. So we have negative 1 to the n over n. And these two series are exactly the same. Well, now we have uh, what looks more like an alternating series. So we have to find out if the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, we have to, that has to be equal to 0, and in fact it is 0. Now we have to show that a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n. And, well, we have 1 and then 0.5 and then 0.333 repeating and then we have 0.25 and then we have uh, 0.2 and that's the decimal values for all these fractions and I'm pretty convinced that this is actually decreasing so this series converges by the alternating series test. Now we have the alternating series remainder. Suppose an alternating series satisfies the conditions of the alternating series test. So first of all it converges. Namely that, well here's the two conditions, they're met. If the series has a sum s, so this is the entire sum of the entire series, then the remainder of the nth term equals the entire sum minus the partial sum on the nth term, that will be the difference between those two, in other words, the error. So let's say that the entire sum was uh, 5, and we estimated it at 4.5. Well, now we have an error of 0.5, and it says that this error will be less than the next term, in other words, the first term that's neglected where s sub n is the nth partial sum of the series. In other words, if an alternating series satisfies the condition of the alternating series test, you can approximate the sum of the series by using the nth partial sum, s sub n, and your error will have an absolute value no greater than the first term left off, when we say the first neglected term. Approximate the sum by using its first six terms. All right, let's do that. So uh, here we have, let's see, if I plug a 1 in, I'm going to get... Uh, negative 1 to the 0, which is 1. So we have 1 over 1 factorial, which is actually 1. If we plug a 2 in, we're going to have minus 1 over 2 factorial. If I plug a 3 in, that's going to go back to plus 1 over 3 factorial, and so on. Over 4 factorial, plus 1 over 5 factorial, minus 1 over 6 factorial. So there's the first six terms. And we are asked to find the error. Well, uh, let's find the sum of this first. The sum of the first six terms ends up being 0 0.63194. So there's the sum of the first six terms, and now we are asked to find the error. Well, the error is going to be no more, and it's actually going to be less, than the first neglected term. So if we add on the seventh term, we get plus 1 over 7 factorial. So let's see what uh, that is. If we grab our calculator here, we take 1 divided by 7, math, go to factorial. The error is going to be less than 0 0.0002, let's say. So three zeros. So one over seven factorial equals point one two three two. It is actually going to be less than this. So find the error. So the error uh, 
the absolute value of the remainder of the sixth term is going to be less than 0 0.0002. That says use the result to find an interval in which s must lie. So if we minus 0 0.0002 from this value, we get 0.63174. That's going to be less than 0.63194, and that's going to be less than if I add 2 onto this, we get 0.63214. So use the result to find an interval in which s must lie, in which the sum must lie. Well, that's going to be 0.63174 to 0.63214. In this example, we are asked to approximate the sum of this series with an error, with an error less than 0 0.001, which is really said 1 1,000th. So this is, we have to be within 1 1,000th. Well, I'm not sure exactly how many we need to add up, but let's uh, let's start writing some. If I plug a 1 in to n, that'll be squared, which makes this positive. So we're starting with a positive value, 1 over 1 to the 4th, and then minus 1 over 2 to the 4th, and then plus 1 over 3 to the 4th, plus, nope, not plus, because it's alternating. Uh, we need a minus there, minus 1 over 4 to the 4th plus 1 over 5 to the 4th and finally I'm going to write minus 1 over 6 to the 4th. Now if you look off to the side I've written all of these numbers to the 4th power so this series becomes well just 1 minus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 81 minus 1 over 256 plus 1 over 625, and then minus 1 over 1296. Well, if you add up, let's say, the first two terms, that's going to have an error within 1 over 81. If you add up the first three terms, that'll have an error less than 1 over 256. Well, if we add up the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if we add up the first five terms of this series, so uh, this will have an error that is less than 1 over 1 over 1296. Well, this is smaller than 1 over 1000. So if I add up these first five terms, it'll have an error less than 1 over 1296, which is exactly what we want. And I've entered that into the calculator already. Let me turn this on. How come that's not working? There we go. And we have everything added up through the first five terms. We hit enter and we have 0 0.9475. Point, point 0.9475. And so we are practice, this is an approximation of this series with an error less than 1 1,000th.